I'm Dumb Truck DS, and welcome back to Mapping for Quake. This is part two of my texturing videos for Quake. If you haven't seen part one, I highly recommend it. It's an overview of the different types of textures that are used in Quake and some of the parameters. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to manage textures and WAD files. There's a couple different programs that you can use. There's many options out there, but I'll show you the most common and the easiest ways of doing it. And remember, in a future video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own textures and get them into the game. All right, so first up, I wanna show you how to extract a WAD from a BSP file, a map file, basically. As I told you in the last tutorial, every texture is built into the BSP, so you can extract them and make your own WAD from that. So what I'm using for this are Joshua's tools, I call them that. Anyway, they're Joshua Skelton's Quake tools, and I've got the link down below uh, to the website, and it's a suite of tools that run in Python. So you just install Python if you don't have it. You run these uh, from the command line, or you can drag and drop some of them. It just depends on what you want to do. So in this case, I want to take a BSP and make it into a WAD. So I'm going to drag and drop Honey onto this, and it'll run for a second, and then Here's Honeywatt. So it doesn't get any easier than that. Joshua Skelton's Quake tools are very handy. If you need a cross-platform, you know, for Linux or Windows or what have you, Mac, um, that's a good solution if you're on one of those platforms and you're comfortable with command line interfaces. But if you're not comfortable with command line tools, you have other options. One of them is a Windows program called Texmex. It's been around for a while. I'll just go ahead and launch it here. And Texmex is not really an editor. I mean, it's more of a WAD management um, program where you kind of copy and paste textures into it and um, you can move things around and get rid of things. Uh, there's light editing where I believe you can, um, you can mirror and flip things. Um, you can adjust the brightness and things like that. So right here, I'm gonna make a new WAD and I'm just gonna take a couple of these um, textures and just copy them over. It's real easy to do that. So it's easy just to drag and drop uh, textures in there and then you save your WAD. But just a gentle reminder, if you do use someone else's textures, make sure and take note of where they came from. They're pro the information hopefully is in a readme um, and you do wanna give people credit. Um, a lot of times these are id software wads, but in this case I'm looking at Arcane Dimensions and I know a lot of these were either uh, original files or modified files. So there are credits in the Arcane Dimensions readme and it's just the right thing to do is give credit where credit's due. So everything you can do to a texture is just basically a right click away. I use this to look at WADs because it registers in Windows 10, so it's easy just to double click and bring up a new uh, WAD. I like to make my own custom WADs when I'm doing a map because I don't like to have too many textures to kind of look at it. It gets a little overwhelming, so I'll cherry pick and go, okay, well, I'm gonna use this, this, and this. And then obviously, as time goes on, when I need maybe a button or you know some other kind of texture of an idea, I can just drag and drop, open this, drag and drop, and then refresh it in Trench Broom. So here's a few other things you can do with uh, Tex-Mex. Basically, you can take a look and see an animated texture and see all the frames, basically. These are all loose textures that are all collected in here, but it's it's kind of handy to be able to see that because uh, unfortunately, Trench Broom doesn't have animated texture support. All right, so I just discovered uh, in order for this to work, you actually have to start with zero. So you gotta find the zero texture and then it's available. We're gonna to get to editing textures in another tutorial, but you know, if you need to export, you can right click and you've got a variety of different um, formats. This is just a very handy way of getting these MIP textures out of a wad and into say Photoshop or what have you. One thing I didn't go over in the previous tutorial, the overview, was MIP mapping. And so basically all of these textures are referred to as MIP. So you have a WAD file that houses these MIP textures. So they're .MIPs. And you can actually export these as MIP files. So I'm just going to export this guy. And I'm going to save it to my desktop. And that will lead me to our next program that we want to take a look at. It's called WALL-E. So Wally -E is a texture editing program that's really designed from the ground up to um, you know, create textures for Quake 1 and for Quake 2. Well, let's open up the MIP I just created. So that's an individual texture file. Let's take a look what MIPs are. As you can see, there are four basic textures that make up one MIP. And what this is uh, used in is a 3D methodology 
called MIP mapping. And what it means is this larger texture is something that you'd see up close in the game as you get farther away from, let's say, the wall that it's on. These are going to be swapped out to save memory and to help with visual fidelity. That's basically the Wikipedia definition of MIP mapping. So when you are creating textures, you've got this button way down here in the lower left to re-MIP the image. So let's say you make uh, some edits to this. So when you've made your edits and you're happy with it, you should re-MIP these. So as you can see now, all four of these different versions for the different level of details have been updated there. Wally -E is a deep program, it's very powerful. A lot of people have made some really great textures with it over the years and it's it's like 20 years old. <laughs> the program's 20 years old. It only runs on Windows. It is a bit finicky. It's not super intuitive compared to other things. But uh, let me just walk you through the interface uh, and get rid of that goofy thing. So we have the Quake palette over here on the right hand side. And let's talk about WAD management. So I'm just gonna open up the base WAD and we'll take a look here. So we have an image list on the left, and then we have all the MIPS that make up the WAD uh, over here in the middle. And again, if you want to know what you can do to a texture, you can just right click it, um, open, delete, export, all that stuff. Um, there's quite a bit more options because this is a true you know, image editing program. I'm going to click new here, and there's a variety of different types of uh, textures I can make, Half-Life, uh, JPEG, all kinds of stuff here. But we're gonna just stick with Quake 1. It's gonna make a new WAD untitled, and then you can drag and drop. This is a way that you can, um, you know, uh, very similar to Tex-Mex, manage your WADs, make a new WAD, all that stuff. So in the next tutorial, we'll go ahead and start diving in into bringing in new textures, um, from the outside and getting them into a WAD format and dealing with the Quake palette a little bit and Fulbright textures and all these kind of crazy things that make texture editing for Quake so challenging. But uh, we'll get to that in the next tutorial. That's it for now. Thanks for hanging in there and we'll see you in the next video.